everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I'm just sitting here drinking my morning coffee, getting ready to start my day, getting ready to do all my squats, eat breakfast. Uh, and I thought I would talk with you guys a little bit about balancing boredom with effective training, because it's one of the things I noticed uh, in the last few days, more and more people are coming in who've been watching my training, like, wow, this is getting kind of boring. It's, it's really repetitive. You know, when you're, you're filming six of your seven workouts every week, it's really repetitive. There's not a lot of variety. And that's exactly the point. And that's one of the interesting things that we note out there with training. And I think this is something that a lot of these magazines and other people market to, is the fact that people don't want to get bored with their training. And, and we deal with the problem now of with things like ADHD being a bigger problem today. Now, why that is, I don't know. I do not know why there's a higher prevalence of ADHD. It seems to be the case. Uh, seems to be very prevalent among people who lift. I, I've noticed that also that as a demographic, a lot of people, a lot of people who lift suffer from ADHD. I mean, I've met tremendous numbers of people who have been diagnosed with it. And I think there's a tendency there, especially with the younger lifters, uh, to get bored with effective training uh, because they don't understand that fact oftentimes that Getting in and hitting the big lifts over and over and over and over with consistency actually is the key to long-term progress, but they get bored with it. And I think that's one of the reasons all of these body part splits and exercise variation has been really, really easy to market to these people, even if it's less effective, is because of that need, that intrinsic need that a lot of these people have to have a lot of variety in what they're doing to stay interested. Uh, and, you know, that's kind of a juxtaposition that we have because we could argue that, you know, focusing on six or seven lifts for an entire year is probably the best way to gain muscle, strength, everything else. It's the best way to do so. But what happens if a person gets so bored with it that they're not consistent? Uh, someone who's consistent on a less effective program to where they do 37 different exercises is very possibly going to make more progress over the year only because of their consistency and the fact that they're consistently getting in the gym, consistently putting in workload, everything else. Uh, so, you know, how do you balance that? And I would say that for me personally, the style of training I do, we could argue all day long whether Bulgarian is the best training method or not. A lot of people who love it and who uh, are, hit extremely impressive numbers doing this, this style of training will say, well, they don't necessarily feel that it's the best, but it's the best for them. They enjoy it. There, there, are, there, there are other styles of training that are equal in terms of results. Uh, a lot of them will freely admit that, but they enjoy it and they're consistent. And I kind of understand that. And so for me, I don't enjoy sitting around doing a bunch of repetitions. I want to lift heavy weight. I, I started lifting and got hooked on lifting because of heavy weight, wanting to throw around big heavy weight. And so for me, the idea that I can run a training system where six or seven days a week, I'm coming in and hitting singles on big exercises, moving a lot of poundages over the week, appeals to me. Uh, but even I sometimes get a little bored. There are times when I come in and I don't even want to do my training. But the thing is, I grind it out because it becomes habit. And I think that's something people need to remember too. It might be boring to you, but what happens when you make it habit and you know that you've got to get under the squat bar every day? It just becomes part of your life. And at a certain point, it's not always about the entertainment factor. It's about what am I trying to achieve here? What am I trying to achieve? Now, a lot of people will, again, argue, yeah, but I'm a recreational lifter. I'm not trying to compete in anything. I do this for fun, for enjoyment. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, I would say to someone who gets in and trains and does even an ineffective training method, that if you're doing it for enjoyment, that's fine. You're not necessarily training. You're not training because you're not striving to reach a, a goal as effectively or as efficiently as possible, like a serious goal. You're in there because you like it. You want, you enjoy the pump. You enjoy doing all these exercises. Well, uh, that's better than being sedentary. Uh, I don't think anyone can make the argument about that. It, it, that is, someone who comes in and, and lifts and works out or exercises for enjoyment is still going to be healthier. Even if they're not training, they're not really training because training is following a progression with set targeted goals uh, and in which you've mapped out what you are doing specifically to get there and you're consistent uh, with a progression planned out and progressive overload planned. They're still going to be healthier than someone who's not training. 
you know, someone who comes in and plays around three, four, five days a week and just focuses on a pump and a bunch of different exercises, they're still going to be healthier. They're still going to be healthier. They're still going to be fitter than someone who doesn't do that by an enormous margin. So I'm not going to knock someone who chooses to do that. I mean, that's that's what you want. You're getting what you want out of it. You just want to be healthy. You enjoy getting a pump. You enjoy doing what you do. You enjoy a bunch of different exercises so you don't get bored. Well, at least you're doing something. So I can't knock that you're still better than 95% of the population who aren't doing crap, right? At least you're working out. But what it comes down to is people not always understanding that effective training, when you are really training towards serious goals, uh, it gets very repetitive. It gets boring. But you have to question at a certain point, are my goals that I'm trying to achieve worth me getting a little bit bored with what I'm doing in the gym? Would I rather be entertained a little bit more, right? Would I rather be entertained or would I rather reach my goals? Would I rather reach my goals? And, you know, again, it comes down to picking your training style. Sometimes you have to, to balance those two. Sometimes you might use a training that maybe isn't the best. Like if some people could argue, well, I don't think yours is the best. This might be 3% better. But if I'm going to be more consistent with the Bulgarian, which I happen to at least enjoy more than some other variations, I'm probably more likely to reach my goals. But all of them tend to be boring. They all tend to be boring. Uh, and that's the reality of it. That's one reason I pointed out to a lot of people uh, lift mastery style training to where you do, say, body part splits, and you come in and you do high volumes of triples because even though that might be boring for one session, I'm going to come do 10 sets of three on a big exercise and then, you know, a three by three on a secondary accessory lift and go home. Uh, that might be boring for one session, but not really because people who tend to get bored easily, they do seem to have the ability to hyper focus. And that tends to go with things like ADHD is people who get bored easily can hyper focus. And as long as they're not coming in and doing that exact same thing three days in a row, they're okay because they can come in and they can hyper focus on the squat and then doing three sets of chin ups afterwards, right? They can come in and do 10 sets of squats because they know the next time they come to the gym, they're going to do 10 sets of bench press. Right? They're going to do 10 sets of bench press and then, you know, uh, some back off work and another exercise, right? And then the next time they're going to come in, they're going to do 10 sets of deadlifts or 10 sets of overhead press or 10 sets of rows. So at least in that case, they can come in and they can have the consistency and put in a large amount of workload mastering one exercise, hyper-focusing on an exercise, even if that exercise ends up being once a week. If you pick the exercises correctly, someone can do a four-day or a five-day movement pattern split and still make sure every muscle gets significantly fatigued twice a week. Because again, deadlifts and squats on different days. Uh, particularly if you throw in some extra work that maybe works some of those things, some push presses or something on your deadlift day, some back off work, so you get a little more quad, you know, things like that. You can you can go ahead and balance that. Same thing, you know, chest, triceps, pecs, delts. If you have a full day dedicated to the overhead press and a full day to the bench press, uh, that works. So that's one reason I recommend that uh, to a lot of people because it, it can be an effective way to train. You can get big, you can get strong but it will let you change it up every day while still focusing on the basics. Um, because again, I think where people really, they have problems with the boredom is where they get so bored that they need that massive exercise variation to where they're coming in and trying to train like the pro bodybuilders and they have five different chest exercises in one day and call it a chest day. You know, instead of really focusing on one lift, because at the end of the day, you've got to get enough work in and enough heavy work or volume on a given exercise to really master that exercise and with mastering exercises is where you see the long-term progress if you're continually switching things up and have a massive exercise variation you don't progress at any one thing very quickly and it takes you a hell of a lot longer to get anywhere uh, again unless guys are on a bunch of drugs and then they just respond to all the fatigue the fatigue itself has an enormous growth stimulating impact for guys who are blasting gear but people not doing that it's not going to be as effective uh, but it, ultimately what people need to understand effective training is going to carry a boredom component to it. It's going to carry a boredom component to it. And it's, it's a question of you asking, uh, why am I training? Well, why am I going to the gym? What is it that I want to get out of this? Like, what are all of my goals? And you've got to prioritize is your personal entertainment, which might be needed for consistency. Is that more important than reaching this other set of goals? 
Uh, and so there are going to be times where if you really want to reach goals, you're going to have to suck it up and you're going to have to do 30 different workouts throughout the year that you might find boring. You might find boring. You might find monotonous. But effective training tends to be extremely repetitive. And that's one of the things out there when it comes to things like periodization. I don't think periodization was necessarily invented for physiological reasons as far as, oh, every three weeks we change the rep range, right? Block periodization. I think there's an enormous psychological component to that. It's to keep athletes from getting bored. I think that's the biggest component to it. So again, it's about balancing that out. Sometimes even with elite level athletes, you've got to balance out boredom with reaching their goals because you know not everyone can be driven every single day 100% to focus on reaching their goals uh, irrespective of their own entertainment and boredom. So again, there's a balancing act to be played and you've got to find that own personal balancing act. But, but you do need to understand and everyone has to grasp this that at a certain point, effective training will get boring and repetitive. It's absolutely unavoidable. And if it is avoided, you probably have so much variation going on that it probably isn't particularly effective or efficient training. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.